or someone else behind me. Hey, 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 peeps, and welcome back to part two of software setups for our three degree of freedom motion simulator platform. Now, DMAX Dave was giving me a hard time uh, in one of the comments about not following up with sim tools. We talked about uh, our limitations in setting up our geometry and SMC3 utilities, and he was straight into me. Fair enough, Dave. I can be a little bit lackluster sometimes, but as promised, uh, we weren't doing it all in one video. Here we are now in video two. Uh, and we're going to talk about sim tools. Now, before we get to this point, guys, there will be quite a few things that you need to set up before you can begin to run your motion simulator with sim tools. And I'm going to refer back to my mate, uh, DIY DMAX Dave. Please visit his YouTube channel. Subscribe to Dave. He's a top bloke and he's spent a lot of time going through some of this stuff that I really shouldn't bother going through because I'm just doubling up on what he's already done. Between his resources there that he's captured in video, guys, and actually visiting xsimulator.net, which I will link in the description specifically to the Sim Tools setup. Um, between those two resources, guys, all the information you need is there. That's how I found the information that I have gathered. You've got a little bit of stuff you've got to do between uh, having your motion sim uh, built then sort it out in SMC3 or utilities and testing everything so it's working. You've got to get your Arduino loaded up with its IDE, IDE code and you need to get the SMC3 Inno file onto the Arduino. Please refer to DMAX Dave, DIY DMAX. Uh, his YouTube channel, guys, he's in my subscriptions. He's a subscriber. Look him up. You will find those videos in how to download uh, that source code for your Adreno and load it into your Adreno. How to, in the Inno file, set up the correct COM port location. So then SimTool sees uh, your Adreno uh, in your USB, in your device manager, and that sort of uh, business. Please have a look at Dave's videos because I don't want to spend the time because I am a lazy lard ass. I prefer these days to get in my motion sim and drive around in a, in a dream or like a machine, mostly it's in a dream. But I am going to talk about sim tools once you've got all of that running and you have uh, purchased sim tools. You have to purchase sim tools. It's not free. You'll have to purchase it, guys. Get the pro version. It cost me about, I don't know, it was probably around 70 AUD. It's about 56 euro, I think, for uh, sim tools but you need to purchase it. You will also need to purchase the game plugins. Again, uh, Dave has a pretty extensive and exhaustive video on how to set up the game plugins, how to load them into Sim Tools so then your so then Sim Tools recognizes the games that you're playing. You will need to get plugins for whatever games that you plan to play. Again, these are obtained through xsimulator.net. As I say, guys, I will link the specific uh, page to X Simulator that deals with sim tools in the description. Okay, we're going to have a look at how I've set up sim tools and some of the things that I've discovered. So there's not a lot of information online about this, and I needed to uh, basically experiment to come up with the settings that I have. And this is still an ongoing thing, guys, uh, for sim tools. It's not a set and forget. It's something that you constantly tweak because for every car and for every track, you may need to make some adjustments. The main things that you are going to need to focus on, guys, are first and foremost, your interface settings. And you will need to set up your interface settings exactly like what you see here on screen. If you are running your electronics the same as the doctors, if you're using the IBT 2H bridges, if you're using the Audrino uh, Uno R3, these are the parameters that need to be set up in the interface settings. The one that may differ, guys, is the COM port location because that is going to depend on how your PC sees uh, the Adreno, as in where it sees it in USB land. You will need to configure that in the SMC3 Inno file. And to find out about that, again, watch DIY DMAX's videos on that. For me, I have to have mine set up and I have to uh, have edited my Inno file to say COM port 4 because that's where my computer sees my Arduino. Otherwise, all of these parameters you need to set up. You need to set up this code to control three accesses for your three motors. 
let's move to axis assignments. Now, because we use left hand side windscreen wiper motors, we need to do some inverting. So I leave my motors just as they are, wired, uh, just pause to pause, neg to neg. It just means uh, on the right hand side motor, if we are sitting in our rig looking forward, I have to invert that or I have to invert the left hand side motor depending on the parameter and what I am adjusting. So for example, guys, here is a base setup for what my settings are and what my parameters are for all of the different axes uh, that I'm using in sim tools for my car. Those axes are heave, roll, sway, surge, and pitch. Up here, DOF, this is not uh, degrees of freedom, this is degrees of force, okay, for each axis. What we need to keep in mind is we've only really got two motors, okay, apart from our traction loss motor, which is completely different to our pitch, surge, sway, roll, and heave. We've got two motors trying to control all of those different axes and all of that different information going to our Arduino. What I've discovered, uh, this is something that I discovered while reading through xsimulator.net. It is highly advised that uh, by the time you set up all of your parameters in all your different axes, so your axes for pitch, surge, sway, roll, and heave, these ones specifically, you want to make sure that all your parameters don't add up to more than 100 in total. If you go above 100, then you risk clipping the signal, clipping your software. So it would be like running stupid uh, settings, for example, in a force feedback wheel. It'll just get really noisy and really dirty in the software, and you won't get the dexterity, you won't get the clarity that you need. And this is the same with sim tools. Try and keep all your parameters, individual parameters, so then they, of all your axes, so then they add up no more than 100. You could probably go a tad over, but you wouldn't want to go too much. Now, extra here, axis 3A. So axis 1A is my left-hand side motor. Axis 2A is my right-hand side motor. If I want to get pitch, so if I want to get my uh, motion sim to raise up and dip down if I was accelerating or braking, to get them to, to get both of those motor levers to do that, I need to invert my left-hand motor this way. I need to clip. My, this box here on the left hand motor. Surge, right, this emulates like uh, the motion sim dipping down or, or jolting up under acceleration or braking. For surge, I have to invert my right hand side motor. For sway, I need to invert my left hand motor. For roll, we invert nothing. So then the motors act um, independently. We want them basically to, we want one to lift up while one uh, goes down. We want one to go up and one to go down, so we don't invert that. Heave, I have to invert, again, the uh, right-hand side motor. Now, you've got parameters uh, for your axes, so how much force that you uh, select for each one of these axes goes from 0 to 100. Obviously, we're not going to set any of our uh, forces in any of our axes anywhere near that or we will just clip our software and it will be a jumbled mess on the motion sim. So you can see that currently guys with the car that I'm driving and demonstrating uh, very shortly after we've gone through sim tools, it's a long video guys but it's a long track and it's a really interesting uh, road circuit um, to drive on and I'm using a car that has a lot of body roll, it's an old uh, late 60s, early 70s Toyota uh, GT2000. And I've had to set these parameters up for the car to not be too crazy. Um, where you will need to spend a lot of time is in extra one here. Extra one, guys, is our traction loss. That is what you select for traction loss. It's only set at 25. It can go as high as 100 because it's got its own axis. So you could technically run this at 100 and not have any issues, but it is absolutely off its head. It's off its head at 25. Now, on the side here, we've got these little filters, okay? I use no filters on any of my other parameters. I only use filters for my traction loss. I have to do that 
to get my traction loss to feel like it would realistically in a car. I do have a powerful uh, muscle car that I own personally, and I do have a bit of fun in that car. I know what it's like to experience traction loss on a regular basis. So I've got this set up so that it feels pretty much like my car get on that accelerator and have a bit of fun. This is how I've got it smoothing just to smooth everything. I've needed to put a reasonable amount of dead zone in it. Otherwise, the uh, traction loss motor, it jitters, it jolts uh, more than it really should do. Uh, you'll find that even on straight road driving, it'll be sort of moving left and right a little bit. You need to get some dead zone in. This is what I'm reasonably happy with at the moment. I have had it higher with other cars. With this particular car, I've got it set at four. Now, our washout down here, this basically assists your traction loss uh, or our mid-frame to return to centre. Okay, if you've experienced traction loss, this is a setting that either causes the traction loss or the mid-frame to come back to its center point in a rapid motion or slowly. Um, I've got it set on 20. If it's set too low, it really snaps back and it really feels like it's going to snap your spine. If you have it really high, basically it just returns super slow trying to sort of do it so that you can't feel that it's coming back. The problem with it being like that is if you're really on a really windy track and you're losing traction loss around each corner, it gets really jumbled. So I've settled on 25 particularly for this car, and I really sort of sit around the 25 to 35 with most cars. My dead zone, I sit on between 4 and 6. Smoothing, I pretty much leave at 50. Every time you make a change, guys, you need to save. Obviously, I've got a uh, configuration set up here for a Sato Corsa. You can limit your axes, okay? And that's uh, highly advised when you first set up SIM tools to get some limitations in when you're first doing some testing. So before you actually go into a game, guys, you'll go into some output testing, right? Where you'll uh, test with a slider, similar to SMC3 utilities, what all your accesses are doing. I'm not going to do it now. You turn it on, right? Then you get more here as well. You need to go to that to get to your traction loss, your extra parameters. Uh, and you can test your roll, your pitch, your heave, your surge, etc. Like I said, we're not going to do that now. You won't be able to see the rig because I haven't got the camera running. I've only got this stuff happening on screen. So that's really, guys, as short as I can keep it, the game engine. We still have a game manager to look at. We'll look at that one, guys, in the next video. That's where we set up how SimTools interfaces with our games. It's also got a whole bunch of tweaks and, if you like, sort of master tweaks for game engine. So we can uh, tweak things harder or softer. We can bring up our intensity or lower our intensity uh, through our actual game manager profile but we're going to do that in the next video because with the drive i'm about to do this is going to be a very long video and here we are guys we are going to drive the barrow valley national park circuit okay this is an actual road here in australia in the state of new south wales it's around the sydney district and it incorporates the hawkesbury river is a combination of some highway driving some driving through suburbia some country driving and some hill climb stuff it's a really fun map i just stumbled upon it by fluke on a random website when I was trying to find longer Assetto Corsa drives. So I don't know if you'll find this, guys. It was like a bizarre foreign website. I found it on. It was a bit risky, but I, I found it. I downloaded it, and it worked. I don't know if you can get this without paying for it um, any other way. So I just happened to find it. You can see here, guys, I'm uh, driving in a Toyota 2000 GT. It's a part of the Touring Car Legend uh, 6070s pack, and I've got a few of the... Uh, Touring Car Legends as my opponents, running my uh, opponent strength up around 96. So that's what we're doing, guys. Sit back, enjoy the drive. It is quite long. Um, I understand if you don't want to hang around for the whole thing, but it's a lot of fun, and you'll really get to see how the motion sim works around this track. It's a really uh, hard mesh track on this one, so it really rocks and rolls this car uh, around a lot. Enjoy. Well, welcome to Morala Valley, New South Wales in the Sydney district, guys. I'll do my very best to drive here without crashing today, though it's very challenging with this one. For some reason, the AI on this course are a total bunch of retards. So I can't promise anything. If I can avoid getting taken out by them or sabotage myself with my own appalling driving, uh, you'll get to see a bit of this beautiful drive and the motion sim in action with those sim tool settings we've spoken about. Now I can tell you that uh, you actually really get pushed around the G's, you actually feel the G's in the seat with the traction loss in this. 
So I give you a bit of a heads up for some of the camera. You'll see my camera moving around quite a bit. That's me physically being moved around in the seat. There's not much I can do about that. I've got as much dead zone as I can have in the head tracking without it starting to feel unnatural. But um, that can't be avoided. That's part and parcel and that's what would be happening in the car. So it's good like that. This GT2000 Toyota is an absolute boat to drive. But uh, look, it's a bit of fun. Anyway, it showcases the motion sim really well, the way it moves around. So that's why I've chosen it. Enjoy this drive, guys, and I uh, wish me luck. Hopefully, I won't crash out, uh, and we'll see most of the course. Here we go.
me.
crashing on this road is pretty full on. I saw an arrow that said a corner coming. Thank you. So thanks for tuning in. 
Stay healthy.